What is your name and the mission that we're looking at here right now? Right, my name is Ian Walters. I'm the Airbus project manager for Solar Orbiter. And this is the Solar Orbiter spacecraft. We're going on a mission to the sun. We're going to get uh, very, very close to within 26 million miles. Sounds a long way, but it's actually a lot closer yeah. than we are here on Earth. Um, and we're going to study in detail what the sun looks like from that very, very close range. Hey, can you go into just a quick summary of what exactly it's going to do when it gets there? What is the science that the mission is aiming for? Right, so it's got 10 instruments on board, uh, and in fact many more instrument packages. So there's a huge amount of experimental packages that we're going to use to study the science. Um, five of the instruments are looking directly at the sun. They're looking at different wavelengths in X-ray, in ultraviolet, in visible. We're doing uh, spectroscopic analysis, or looking at the different uh, colors, if you like, of the sun. Um, and we've also got instruments that are measuring the local environment of the spacecraft, its magnetic field, what electrical waves are going past the spacecraft at that time, and so on. So a huge, uh, if you like, laboratory we're taking with us. And so some of the questions, I assume, you don't even know what to ask yet. Yeah, right. And that's part of the exciting things of these missions for you guys especially. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, Do you have any theories at all of what you expect you might see or that you hope you see? I'd like to say uh, it's very dangerous to predict. I mean, already yeah. Parker Solar Probe has been there a year and they're discovering brand new science. Um, Parker Probe is only measuring the local environment around the probe. It can't look directly at the sun and take pictures. We're going to be the first ones that take pictures. We're going to work closely together with the Parker Probe as well so that we can coordinate our science. So whenever Parker Probe sees something interesting close by the sun, moments later we'll be able to take photographs of what they've, what they've seen around their spacecraft. So it's going to be really fascinating. It's almost impossible to predict what we're going to find there. So that's actually one thing I'd like to ask you about while we have just another minute. Um, so you will be coordinating with Parker Solar Probes some of the data that comes back from some of these upcoming flybys. Uh, you guys might actually play off of their data and adjust whatever you're doing at the time, huh? Exactly right, yeah. So one of the things we want to do is that the magnetic field lights come out from the sun and then they go around in a big wide curve. And you can get really good if you like, scientific correlation between what they're measuring and what we're measuring if we're on the same magnetic field line. So Parker Probe will tell us, hey, we're on a, in something interesting here and we'll be able to synchronize where we are to be on exactly the same field line so we can take the same measurements. So effectively particles going down the field line, it's like a highway in space, they'll measure it and then we'll know where we are. Yeah. When we get there, we'll be able to measure exactly the same environment by the time it gets to us. And, so, and we're starting this synchronization already once we get in orbit. Within a few months we start to work together to synchronize. Is it all infrared photography or what kind of digital images can the public expect? from the spacecraft? Well, every image that we take, you will be able to see um, as a photograph. Yes. So even if we take it in x-ray, it'll be converted into something we can see as a photograph. Okay. So you know, we'll, we'll see the whole range of colors of the sun, you know, in ultraviolet, x-ray, right. visible. Um, everything will be a fantastic photograph. And, and we'll be able to see really, really small details on the sun as well. So Things that we haven't seen before. Yeah, right. We're so close. Um, we said that the range of the sun is 70 kilometers per pixel. So 70 kilometers on something that's a million kilometers wide, it's astonishingly fine detail. You know? So we can look inside single sunspots. You know, we can, we can look on the surface of the sun. As the sunspot is opening in. Exactly, yeah. Well, that's some fascinating science. We wish you the best of luck, and we look forward to the launch here uh, in springtime. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it myself. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. NASA to the ESA mission. One of them is this one right here. It's the Sol High, and Sol High stands for Solar Orbiter Helio Heliospheric Imager. And as you can see, it's open right now. This is in the launch configuration with the door open. It has an aperture, and it's going to be looking. It's an imager, so it's going to be looking at the uh, solar flares as they leave uh, the sun and so make their trajectory. Time and make their trajectory towards the Earth. Okay. So that's this one right here, it's an imager. And then this little sensor here that has an aperture through the heat shield of the spacecraft is the heavy ion sensor. And as the name says, it's going to be looking at the, uh, collecting the ions through an aperture here on the front. Um, and then doing, um, the, determines the, I don't know, the, Theresa. Yeah, velocity, 
So I'm trying um, composition. So right, that's the word that I. I'm sorry, I messed up. So this is going to be um, taking a sample of particles, and in this case, our ion particles of the the solar flares, uh, the plasma that it's in the heliospheric uh, atmosphere, and it's going to be doing composition measurements and also velocity measurements of these particles. So and so that's those are the two instruments for NASA. We we still don't know so much about the sun. And this mission is going to be doing a di more observations on not just the the sun, but also the trajectory of the plasma and the solar winds as they get close to our Earth, and what impact will it have? Uh, for me, this is the most important star. There's, uh, <laughs> I think so. It's yeah. the only star that matters because it's our star, and our lives depend on on knowing. What the soul, uh, what the sun does. Yeah. So and how long has the NASA team been working on those two instruments? So these instruments were delivered to ESA in 2017. But beyond that, uh, in order to develop the concept for the mission, that was done as part of the collaboration between ESA and NASA. Uh, scientific teams got together and determined what are the solar observations that we need to do and what is the set of instrumentation that is needed in order to meet the science objectives of the mission. So we started working with the uh, selection of the instruments in 2011. Okay. So we have been working on this Quite for a, a very long time. Yeah. Yes. Fascinating. Yes. So as far as how this is oriented, are we backwards? Is this the side that's going to be facing the sun? This yeah. is the sun, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we're opposite so, of what we've... So the sun is... Yeah. The sun is here, right. and this little instrument is peeking through the heat shield yes. that is protecting the, all the electronics behind so and amazing. all the instruments. And he said behind can be minus 100 degrees plus or mm -hmm. minus. That just yeah. seems strange being close to the sun and then... Exactly. <laughs> but what happened is that behind the... I mean, in this area behind, you have... Yeah. You have the space, and yeah, the space and it is a dissipator, so it just dissipates all that heat, and it gets pretty cold on the back of the spacecraft. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes, it right? is. It is. But well, we wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate that.